What is my favorite course to teach and the one that I think is best for every diver to eventually take? Let's dive in and find out. Welcome back guys. My name is Blake and I'm a professional recreational scuba diving instructor and digital content creator. And if you like scuba diving content involving gear configuration, tips, dive sites, and so much more, then dive down, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and ring that dive bell. That way you'll never miss out on any of our exciting content because I use all my years of experience as a diver, dive master, and instructor to help improve your dives. For the past three weeks, we've been talking about specialty courses, which ones I believe you should focus on, which ones are a waste of your time and money, and which ones may be worthwhile if they fit into the kind of diving you're currently doing or plan to. Now, that stirred up some debates in the comments, and I'm fine with that. I don't expect everyone to agree with me, after all, there are what, seven billion-ish people in the world? I'm not naive enough to think that there won't or shouldn't be a difference of opinion. You're at quitsies. Any quitsies, you're at quitsies. No, any quitsies, no startsies. You can't do that. Can to, cannot, stamp it. Can to, double stamp it, no erases. Cannot, triple stamp it, no erases. Touch no, blue, no, make it no, through. No. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. Lloyd, Lloyd, you guys! I structured the videos that way for a reason, and that is because there are steps to take and those specialty courses are the building blocks you have to achieve before you can get your advanced certification and then move on to my absolute favorite course. So my favorite course to teach and one that I believe you should all get is Rescue Diver. Unfortunately, I don't get the opportunity to teach Rescue Diver that often because Tampa Bay Diving is structured as one-to-one. -one. I teach private courses with one student at a time so that I'm focused on developing the student's skills to the best that they can be. Versus being in a class with eight to 12 where I have a limited amount of time to just make sure that the students can do each skill successfully at least one time. I love being able to work with one student and making sure that they develop the muscle memory by practicing everything multiple times and it really takes away any time constraints and makes the student more confident in their abilities. I compare it to putting your child in a class with 30 or so students or one-to-one -one with a private teacher for the duration of the education. If the teacher is really good, then your child will probably be ready for college by the time that they're 14 or 15. Plus cosine equals one. Sheldon. I don't want to embarrass you, so I'm going to give you a moment to think about what you just said. The exception to that is Rescue Diver, which needs to be taught in a group setting for the skills and scenarios that you will encounter. Now, why should every diver take this course? Well, I'm gonna go through and give you my top reasons why every diver should be a rescue diver. Let's dive in. Reason number one, usefulness. Scuba diving is an inherently dangerous sport. We're all taught that from the beginning of our open water days and it's drilled into our heads with every course that we take. Built into them are precautions, hazards, and procedures to follow. I'm a firm believer that if you dive long enough, then eventually you'll witness a dive accident or an emergency, especially if you advance on to doing either technical diving, public safety diving, or cave diving in particular. Rescue Diver gives you the foundational building blocks on responding to accidents that may occur in scuba diving by developing crucial life-saving skills. It teaches you how to handle dive emergencies with a sense of calm and efficiency. And some of the key takeaways you'll get from the course include mastering self-rescue techniques, assisting others effectively, and managing potential panic situations underwater. Reason number two why I believe every diver should get Rescue Diver is perception slash consciousness. Most divers, when they start off, have this sense of focus on what is going on with their dive, 
their bodies and the environment immediately surrounding them. And that's understandable. They don't have the experience yet that more seasoned divers have from being exposed to say 100, 500, 1000 or more dives. They simply aren't as experienced yet and that's fine. We were all there at one point or another. But what Rescue Diver does is to kind of take off the proverbial lens and get them out of that tunnel vision state and to help them see the bigger picture surrounding them. For example, during a dive brief, noticing if someone is not paying attention to the warnings or hazards the dive master is giving them about the local environment. During final gear checks, noticing if another diver has something wrong with their equipment and are keeping it to themselves in order to not miss out on a dive. Underwater, if the conditions are changing and taking the necessary precautions to adapt to them. It really helps you to not only focus on yourself, your dive, how everything is going on with you, but also your environment and the other divers around you, i.e. the potential hazards in the area. Current, for our dive buddies out in Asia Pacific, downdraft, and oh yeah, the dive professionals out there will know what I'm talking about. Wildlife and the potential for human error. And a third reason why I believe every diver should take Rescue Diver is self-assurance. Have you ever been on a dive or getting ready to dive and thought to yourself, what am I going to do if something goes wrong? And then start playing out different scenarios in your head. I know I have, and I see it in a lot of new divers, especially when they are diving out in the ocean for the first time. For some reason, there is just this natural panic that occurs when being put out into the big blue for the first time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I'd rather be on a dive with someone who has that in the back of their head, rather than just being with someone who is completely complacent because that's when can really hit the fan. The moment that you think you know everything there is to know about diving and the potential for things to go wrong, is the moment when I would tell you to quit diving because that is when you are most dangerous. Now, the difference is Rescue Diver will help build self-confidence and assurance that if something were to go wrong, then you can say that I'm a valuable asset to my buddies and the crew because I have training and experience to offer. I can bring an unconscious diver up from depth. I can assist another diver if they have an injury and competently and safely get them out of the water. And that's what we really want. Nothing in life worth having is obtained easily or overnight. And that's kind of the reason why I waited to make this video until after our specialty courses. If you had a good instructor or instructors for the core specialty courses, then you would have received plenty of practice in those skills and should be confident that if needed, you can execute them. They all play a part in building and shaping the kind of diver that you will be. Now, no amount of training will help you if you don't continue to practice them. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? So every dive you go on, try to incorporate at least one of those skills that you learned so that you can keep them sharp. And I'll give you one better. If you're out with your dive buddies, develop a POA or plan of action on who will do what if something were to go wrong. Next time you're on a dive boat, if the leader doesn't show you where the O2 kit is stored, asked to see it. Side story, I was getting ready to go on a dive boat one time when I asked to see the O2 kit. It was locked and no one had the key. So I promptly asked, okay, so what are we gonna do if someone has a DCS hit and needs oxygen? The operator didn't have a clue, but went out anyway. Guess who wasn't on the boat? This guy. Yes, I did get a refund and no, I'm not gonna name the operator, but they are a large dive center in Key Largo that has, well, I'll say a notorious reputation. A little investigative work will help you figure that one out. But always being prepared and cautious will go a long way. And if you are planning a trip to Florida and would like to take a course with us or have me as a dive guide, then I encourage you to contact us as soon as possible. Our calendar is filling up for the summertime and space is limited due to prior trips and filming that has already been scheduled. But it's been a wild ride so far. And to the students and divers who have already visited us here in Tampa, it's been awesome getting to meet and connect with you in person and underwater. And just down below, as always, in the description is all of our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us via email, give us a call. 
or visit us at our website at tampabaydiving.com. If you enjoyed this content, it would really make my day if you could dive down, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and ring that dive bell. And let me know down in the comments if you're already certified as a rescue diver, did you enjoy the course, or have you had to use any of those skills? If you're not a rescue diver, do you plan on taking it? And just over here, I'll let the YouTube algorithm choose a video especially for you because let's face it, the algorithm knows you better than you know yourself. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, plan your dive and dive your plan.